Hey everyone, this is Nick and today we're going to talk Linux installation. As we all know, Linux doesn't come pre-installed on a lot of computers, especially in mass market retail stores. And this means that you're going to have to install Linux yourself on your own devices or on something that you bought. And Linux does still carry a reputation that it's hard to install. But is that reputation still true? That is what we're going to talk about in this video. But first, we're going to talk about how you can run your own Linux server or gaming server, thanks to today's sponsor, Linode. Linode is an amazing way to get your Linux server up and running. They've been voted top provider for infrastructure as a service by G2 and Trustradius, and they offer tons of one-click deployable servers. For example, Owncast, letting you run your own Twitch-like streaming server with video broadcast and chat capabilities or Apache Guacamole, which is the easiest way to get your own fully featured Linux desktop in the cloud, accessible from anywhere in the world. If you prefer gaming, you can also start your own Valheim server on Linux, and they also have one-click servers available for CSGO, Rust, Arc, or Minecraft, among others. Now, on top of that, Linode is currently upgrading all their data centers with faster NVMe block storage, which means that every server that you currently have with them or that you plan to open with them will have access to that faster storage at no extra cost for you, which is pretty freaking amazing. Now, I personally run my own Nextcloud instance and only Office document server, both on Linode, and I couldn't be more satisfied. I can only recommend them. So if you want to give them a shot and get started, click the link in the description below and you will get a free $100 credit to start your own Linux server. Okay, so when talking about installing Linux, we instantly think about our graphical installers, like the ones that Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Manjaro, Pop! OS, or Elementary OS provide. We don't talk about the one that Fedora uses. But we forget that there is a step before accessing that graphical installer, and that's creating a bootable media. While it sounds super easy for most users who have made the switch to Linux, and users who distro hop constantly thanks to Ventoy and the ability to never flash a USB drive again, it's important to remember that most people who use a computer have never created an installed disk on their own. A small fraction might have done so with an automatic tool for a Windows upgrade, but that's about it. The very process of downloading an ISO file and an external program and using both of these to make your installed media can be pretty scary for people if only because they've never done it. There's also the fact that no one knows what an ISO file is because no one uses a CD or DVD burner anymore. And just by saying that, I'm pretty sure that someone will write in the comments that they use a DVD burner every day. Because of course they would. Now, even if the user manages to make that flash drive, they still have to be able to boot from it. A lot of computers that come with Windows pre-installed will only boot to the disk drive first for security reasons. This means that people will have to go to the UEFI or BIOS or to the boot priority list. And that's not something that most people know how to do either. The key you're supposed to press isn't necessarily written on the screen. You might have to look for it online. And the process can be hit or miss depending on your reaction time. Or you can use this ancestral technique that's passed down from generation to generation. When a user has managed to jump through all these hoops, then they can access a live session or the installer, and then they can see how easy Linux is to install. Now, I do wonder why distributions don't distribute an all-in-one tool that would serve as the media creation tool and contains the ISO or downloads the ISO from the internet. Basically, the Windows media tool creation something, but for their distribution. That would save people a lot of time and save a step. It would be way easier. I don't know why distros don't do that. Still, while us Linux users might find these steps extremely easy, for a new user that has never installed an operating system and has no idea what the BIOS or UEFI is or a bootable flash drive is, they're gonna be lost. These are daunting steps. They mess with stuff that you're not familiar with. And so they will have to force through these barriers to get Linux to install, which makes Linux hard to install in itself. Linux desktops also generally offer live sessions, and these are great to try out the distribution and the desktop before installing. I think these live sessions make the install experience much more user-friendly because you are not dropped immediately into something that will mess with your SSD or hard drive. You get a chance to see what it is that you're installing. And of course, it has the added benefit of letting a user try out all their hardware peripherals, all their devices, all their programs beforehand to see if it works and if they should install. And that's something that I think distributions do not stress enough. 
The live session should be used by beginners every time to check out for stuff before they install. It's it should be mandatory, basically. Windows and macOS don't offer live sessions, though, probably because they assume that they will be fully compatible with the hardware they run on, which means that users generally have no concept of what a live session is and what it does. Now think about it. It's not immediately crystal clear that this session you're running isn't installed on your computer directly or that the changes you make in this session will be lost when you reboot. This needs much, much better explanation. Live sessions are fantastic tools, but dropping a user into one without warning or explanation kinda makes them scarier than if they weren't here. After all, you downloaded an install file and created an install flash drive, it's not entirely unreasonable to assume that this session that you're booted in when you restart your computer is actually installed on your hard drive and that everything has been wiped out. To turn the live session into a fully useful tool that helps instead of scaring people, I think that the addition of a welcome screen explaining what the session is, the fact that it won't do anything to your hard drive unless you start installing, and the fact that every change or file is not permanent would be a nice plus. Now you might think that this is overkill and that a live session speaks for itself, but I have seen users try to run Mac apps from the DMG image files instead of copying them to their apps folder, even though it's clearly written that they should copy it to their apps folder, so yeah. Basic users don't really understand what they're doing. You need to be super crystal clear. And now we come to the good part, the part where Linux excels compared to the competition, the graphical install part. And Linux desktops in that regard are stellar. Our installers are the most user-friendly that any user could happen upon. And again, we don't talk about the Fedora installers. No, or, or any Arch install script. No. The install process is generally extremely simple if you want to erase your disk or install alongside another OS in dual boot. You pick the language, the keyboard layout, an install drive, a few options for extra codecs or drivers, and you're good to go. Sure, if you want to use a custom partition layout, it is more complex. But generally, if you want to do that, you know what a partition is, and so you're not a beginner. You know what you're doing, technically. Some installers let you create your user account right during install, like Ubuntu for example, and this saves time, because as soon as you reboot, you're ready to go. Others opt for the OEM install, which lets the user create their account after the first boot. This makes the experience a bit more guided, in my opinion. But both methods are good. Generally, I think the OEM one is the one people will be the most familiar with, as that's how Windows and macOS do it as well. Now, what exactly makes these installers better than the one on Windows, for example? First is the speed. Installing a Linux desktop takes from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on your disk speeds. Windows can take up to an hour with all the reboots and the loading screens. Second, the number of steps. Linux installers don't pester you with questions and options and stuff to disable. Do you want telemetry? Which kind? Inking and drawing? Will you need some targeted ads with that, my lad? Can I interest you in sharing your location? Find my device? Speech recognition? None of that here. Worst case scenario, you have a checkbox to uncheck to disable telemetry in Ubuntu's installer. That's it. The rest is purely related to your user account. Optional profile pick, name, password, optional online accounts, and some installers will throw in location as well. Third, the install experience is much more seamless. You get the installation screen, one reboot, and the user account creation in case of an OEM install. Windows reboots an unhealthy number of times during install, which makes the process jarring. You're just along for the ride as the computer switches from a black screen to an OEM logo, to a loading screen in super low res, to a please wait screen, then another reboot. It's just a terrible experience for a user. Now, of course, most users will not see that because they will buy a computer with Windows pre-installed and they get directly to the OEM user account creation thing, but they'll get all the questions. So is Linux hard to install? Well, there are two ways that I can answer this question. The first one is just taking Linux and Windows on an equal footing, as if someone wanted to install an OS onto a blank computer. In that case, Linux isn't hard to install at all. It's easier than Windows. In both cases, you have to download an ISO file, create a bootable disk, manage to boot from it, and install. And the Linux install process is much, much easier once you've done these first steps. This answer isn't the complete picture though, because most people who use Windows will never have, and never had, to install Windows. 
The second way I can answer the question is yes, Linux is hard to install. Because while actually installing it is a very easy process, the whole way to access the graphical installer is convoluted, requires a third-party tool and access to the BIOS or UEFI. Now, which answer you pick is up to you. I personally will always err on the side of the user is drunk. Basic beginners with computers do not understand these concepts, they do not know what to do, and so for them, yes, Linux is still hard to install because while the graphical installer is pretty easy, all the steps that lead to being able to see that graphical installer are really not. And so sure, Windows is harder to install than Linux if you start from a blank computer and a user has to do all the manipulations themselves. But for most people, that's not going to be their experience. And as such, Linux is still hard to install. This myth isn't really a myth, in my opinion. So this video, as always, was made possible by Slimbook, and Slimbook makes Linux devices. Laptops, desktops, all-in-ones, NUCs, even keyboards. You can buy them from the link in the description below. I only use their stuff nowadays. I use their Chimera desktop, I use their Slimbook Pro X14, and I use their RGB keyboard. It's really great stuff. I left the link in the description. Click it if you need a new Linux device. And now you know what I'm going to ask you to do, right? Yeah those buttons underneath the video, subscribe, like, notifications, or even the dislike button if you want. Just click some of these or all of them or whatever. It's cool for the channel. And if you want to help me make more of these videos, you can also join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members. Both get the same number of perks. You get a weekly Patreon cast or rant where I talk about Linux, technology, and how I make all these videos. And you also get the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover for the next month. So check out those links in the description if you're interested. In the meantime, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye.